Hey guys, it's me, Christy Lee, and I figured since I was home today, I would do a little update on our copper penny stack, I guess is what you want to call it. So, in at some time last year, okay, it says March 2nd, 2015, I started keeping just the random copper pennies that we got back in change, or when I started working at Subway, I would trade out, I would bring the zinc pennies in and trade them out for copper pennies in the till. So in April of last year, I was about here with my copper pennies. Sometime after this, we started doing coin roll hunts where we would go and either ask for a few rolls of rolled pennies from the bank teller or we would um, get whole boxes, $25 worth of pennies. And if you guys have been here for a while, you've seen us do those coin roll hunts. Well, up to date, we have one two liter jug completely filled and then this one is a little less than halfway full. I can no longer pick this up with one hand. This is so very heavy. I, I'm gonna wager that this is around 40 pounds and the pre-1982 pennies are made up of 95% copper. So people have been talking for years about the fact that the U.S. is going to stop making pennies because they cost too much to make. Um, I watched something the other day that said the zinc pennies cost 2.5 cents to make and they're only worth one cent. Um, and right now, well not right now, but I just looked at something that said in 2013 the melt value of the copper in one of these pre-1982 pennies is about two cents for each penny. So that still makes them worth more than face value. And I know that copper's down right now, so they may not be worth quite as much, but they're still worth more than their face value. So I just wrote down a few of the reasons why I started keeping my copper pennies and why I think maybe you should too. You guys might know that we're uh, coin collectors and silver stackers, and we've been trying to diversify our portfolio. That's a quote portfolio, our metal portfolio, to include other metals instead of just silver. Uh, we don't have any gold yet, but we'll get there one day. But copper pennies is the easiest to stack because you're not losing any money. You're gaining money every time you, you save a copper penny. Um, they're the easiest to find. You don't have to go out and specifically purchase them from a coin shop or anything. If you just check your change, you'll find them every day. I find a lot of these on the ground because I always pick up uh, change that I see on the ground. So I find a lot of these just on the ground. They're very, they're still very common, but I have a feeling because Canada has already stopped producing, and actually I think 18 other countries have stopped producing pennies. I think eventually America is going to follow suit, so I think people are going to start hoarding these like we are. So if you're going to do this, I would start now. Now I have no idea how much in terms of dollars is in here. Um, I'm not even going to try to guess. I'm not even going to try to guess. But I'm sure it's enough that if we needed to roll these up and spend it to help us get through the week, we could. But we don't even look at this as money. We look at this as copper investment, however you want to call it. Sorry, the lighting keeps changing. So I wrote down my reasons, and I've already said a few. So the, the copper penny is worth more than face value. That's already one good reason to um, start stacking your copper. Canada, and I think it's 18, 17 or 18 other companies have already stopped um, producing um, their pennies. Uh, right now you could sell a roll of unsearched copper pennies for around, I want to say it was seven dollars that I saw it on one of the selling apps. But at least, at least a few bucks. I would say at the very least a dollar. So if you wanted to, you could just roll up a bunch of rolls of just copper pennies and sell them out for a dollar each. So you're already making twice the value. Um, like I said, we collect all kinds of metals. We have silver now, copper, and lead. We just recently started melting down the lead wheel weights that we, that I have collected over the years. 
and because we metal detect and for some reason the area that we live in we find a lot of wheel weights and um, lead weights fishing weights and things like that in the ground around our house so we've been melting those down um, I've always particularly liked the copper pennies even before I knew uh, that the pre 1982s were made of something else made with it were made of copper they always they feel different they feel a little heavier they feel thicker they feel more real than the the zinc pennies that are being produced now they just feel more valuable to me so even before I knew it was because they were made out of 95% copper as opposed to the you know thin copper coating of the zinc pennies I liked them I like how they age. I like the colors and the and the textures and the um, so you can get some that are like have a red tint to them. I don't know if you'll be able to see that there, but that one has like a red tint to it. You can get some that have like the wood grain finish to them. You get some that kind of turn a little black in color. So the, I like the way they tarnish. I just like the way they look and the way they feel. So that's another reason why we like to hang on to them. Um. If, if America or the U.S. stops producing their copper pennies and they make it legal for you to melt these down, you're going to get a pretty good deal for it, I think. Because, like I said, this is just a two-liter bottle filled with pennies, and I cannot lift this up with one hand anymore. I'm going to say this is probably around... I'm going to guesstimate between 30 and 50 pounds. I'm not real good at it. I know that a gallon of milk is 10 pounds, and this is much, much heavier than a gallon of milk. I could probably carry three gallons of milk by myself, and I would say that, that the, this is heavier than that. So just looking at copper value, what you could melt these down for and take them to a scrapyard, if copper prices were at 280 a pound and you had 40 pounds, What's that? 40 times 2 is 80 bucks. If it was 30 pounds, 60 bucks. Something like that. Now that wouldn't be pure copper because 5% is something else and I don't really remember what it is. But there are ways to get to get the copper pure if you decided to do that. Can't do it now. It's illegal. So don't do it. Don't do it. Um, and I think about the fact that a good portion of my collection will eventually be passed down to my children and my grandchildren. So once they stop printing pennies, period, and people start hoarding and or melting down the copper pennies, these are going to be harder to find. So when our children are grown or our grandchildren are grown, it's going to be really rare for them to come across a pre-1982 copper penny. So I'd like to have a bunch of these to be able to pass down to them and they can pass down and pass down, you know. Um, we do uh, occasionally find some of these copper pennies that are in just phenomenal condition, uncirculated or about uncirculated or some of them even look to be mint state. I don't know how they survived so long in such great condition. But when we find those, we stick those in two by twos and we keep those in our collector's book instead of putting them in here. So these are just the ones that are just regular old looking. You know, some of them are pretty beat up. Some of them still look decent, but not well enough to go in a two by two really. So yes, that is why we stack our copper pennies and why I think you should too. If you're looking to invest in metals and maybe you don't have the means to go out and purchase gold. I know a lot of us don't. Maybe you don't even have the means right now to go out and purchase silver. Your best bet is to just start keeping. You, I would make a separate pile because half of the 1982 pennies are zinc and half of them are copper. So I would make one container for the 82 pennies because the only way to tell for certain would be to weigh them. And if you don't have a little a weigh thing, we do, but we don't, you know, um, if you can't weigh them, you, you have to wait and figure all that out later. So just make one for the 82s and then one for the 81s and back. And the ones that are 81 and back, you know, without a doubt, are 95% copper. Um, and like I said, the 82s, you'll have to uh, weigh them and figure that out. So 
yeah, I just want to do a little video, give you guys an update on our stack so far. We're going to continue to do this. I don't think we will ever stop doing that. And I think it's a great way for someone to get into stacking metals um, the easy way. And if you have a bank, you can go there, ask them for rolls of pennies, ask them for a box of pennies, um, re-roll, you know, whatever you don't keep. And... Um, we always save a little glass jar of the zinc pennies to put back into the rolls that we take out of so that we don't, you know, we can take a full box back to the bank after we've gone through them. So, yep, that's it for you guys. Uh, I didn't think this was going to be a 10-minute video. I apologize for that, but I just wanted to give you an update on how it's going and tell you a little bit about why we do it and why I think you should. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit that like button, share with your friends. And thank you as always for being here. Bye.